And then what really shifted it was I understood that I didn't have to do everything myself. Because I, I don't know why, but I used to clean my own properties. Right? Cause I'm I would have thought to do the same thing to save that money. Save that money, yeah. right? Um, but here's what people have to understand, right? And this is what I had to understand. True business owners, they work on their business, not in their business. Oh, my you know? God. Say that again. They work on their business, not in their business. True business owners. You know, a lot of people, they think they have a business, but they really own a job. They're doing everything. Right. And I had to learn that because, you know, Jamaicans will work one job, two job, three jobs. You know, like <laughs> yes. we pride ourselves on hustle and work. Yes. And and even for business owners, sometimes we feel like, you know, we don't think someone else is going to, you know, care about putting in the work or care about the business as much as we will. Welcome to The Dash. You know, The Dash is that tiny line between your life start date and end date. It's your story. The chapters in your book, your journey. Your journey. Your journey. Get ready for real conversations with real people telling real stories about the realities of failure, setbacks, and success. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're rolling. Let's go. Dash in three, two, one. Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Lady Jade, and welcome to another episode of the Dash Podcast. Y'all, I am excited today because this guest has become a personal friend of mine because he's so amazing at what he does. But before I introduce you to our guest, I want to tell everybody, please, 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 I need your help getting my followers up. I'm gone. Keep it real on YouTube. Please, I need you to like, subscribe, comment, share, do all of that stuff. It is so easy. Just hit the subscribe button. Support your girl, okay? But our guest today is Mr. Kamoy Martin. I have to read the amazing things that he does off of his <laughs> Instagram page. You guys, he is a world traveler. Been to over 49 countries. He's a real estate investor, short-term rental coach, and he helps people create freedom so they, that they can travel the world like he does. First of all, Kamoy, I am honored that you are sitting here with me. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. Oh you know, my! Okay. On, on the Dash podcast. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Y'all have no idea, like Kamoy, I followed you forever hmm. on social media, and I did what I told everybody else. I, I would always like, I would also always support because appreciate that. I mean, first of all, your content is freaking dope. Your life is freaking goals. <laughs> and so we're going to talk about that. So quickly, for those that don't know who Kamoy Martin is, tell us a little bit about what you do, what you teach, yeah. all that good stuff. For sure. Um, you know, Jamaican, Jamaican bred. Yeah, mine. Brooklyn, New York raised. <laughs> um, just, you know, entrepreneur, you know, world travel, like you said. And, you know, I'm I'm heavy in the Airbnb and short term rental space, but I'm just, you know, I'm all around just just I'm a true entrepreneur. Right. And I love helping people. Right. And and I have a just a just just this desire to really live life to the fullest, you know, because I understand the dash, you know, the dash for those of you that really don't understand what the dash is. The dash is definitely that. It's seemingly insignificant line between your your birth date and your death date. But yep. it is it's our story. Yep. It's the journey. Right. Yep. And so this has been a journey for you and we want to learn more about your journey. Um, so you talked about, I want to talk about the short term rental cause you do a lot of coaching first. Yep. Um, you're extreme. That's why I started following you. Come on. I ain't gonna lie. You be going on some bomb trips, but I'm like, how do I get there? How do I get to the point of living a, an amazing life? Like you, you have helped so many people, uh, with short term rentals. You're very successful at it, right? I'm pretty good. Okay, let pretty me good. tell you, we don't we not <laughs> humble in here. We we stunt we stunt on the dash podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do pretty well, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm not gonna check your bank account, but <laughs> I'm already watching how you live in, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what made you start doing that in the first place? Man, uh, it depends where we start, you know. Mm. So we can we can go back to to Brooklyn. We can go back to when I became an entrepreneur. How how deep you want to go? Uh, take me back to the most interesting part. Okay. So obviously, you weren't doing this when you first, you know, graduated high school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what what what? How did you start in the career lane? So all right, so pretty much right. I'm gonna kind of make it expedited. Okay. So again, I was raised in Brooklyn. So I was born in Jamaica. So my parents moved to America to live this better life. Right. Right. And if you know anything about just, I don't know if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're American. I'm right. American, but my father is from Jamaica. So I know okay. what it's like to okay, live cool. in a West Indian household for yeah, sure. Yeah. So like when you're born in that type of household, a lot of times, you know, they look at school, like the, the savior, like this is going to be our ticket to, to Come thrive boy. in America. Yes. You know? 
Yes. Um, so my mom was like adamant about the school thing. And um, I hated school. Mm -hmm. Right. So like my whole time through school, I was doing the bare minimum. Okay. even getting to college right and i don't even like a lot of my like guidance counselors in high schools they kind of like told me that i probably shouldn't go to like a four-year school and you should go to a community school <laughs> they told you yeah yeah oh, they're no. like you know that that's probably not for you but i was like nah i want a college experience right i don't like school if i'm gonna go to school i, I might as well enjoy it yeah for <laughs> sure know? absolutely so um i went out to morgan state university hbcu mm -hmm. in um baltimore maryland and i was just I was trying to figure things out, but it was so cool kind of getting that, you know, going to that environment because it, it really helped me mature and develop because it was like a whole new environment. Right. right? And mom and dad aren't there. They're not there. You what to do. Yeah. You know, so I'm growing up. It yeah. kind of like helped me grow up faster. Mm -hmm. um, so they asked me what major do I want to choose? And I had no idea. A million dollar question. Right. Nobody and I'm knows. like, well, I don't want to just wait. So let me just pick something. So I picked biology. Uh, to now, be honest with you, who picks biology? Yeah, you I, don't like school and you pick biology. Right. I, I always tell people that's probably like at least top three majors to choose yeah. <laughs> if you really are not all in, you know. Okay. But in my mind, I was like in third grade, I like science, so biology should work. Okay. Right? Okay. <laughs> so, so just, man, I had a tough time, man. Like, just, I was doing the bare minimum. Okay. Right. And um, I, here I am about to graduate, and I'm like, I don't really know what I want to do. I know I don't want to go to med school because mm -hmm. that's what typically people do with a biology degree. Sure. Um, I don't want to be, you know, I thought about being a dentist. I thought about physical therapy. I didn't really care to be these, you know, things, but I'm trying to make sense of this degree. Yeah. So after I graduate, you know, I'm like, I can't even find a job in my field. Like, I'm struggling. Yeah. Right. And so you I, actually did complete the biology I, I degree. I did get a bachelor's. Funny thing is, I started grad school, okay. but I got kicked out after the first year. Okay, all right, okay. Because <laughs> what I realized, you can't do the bare minimum in grad school. No, you can't. Like, you actually have to, like, get at least, like, a 3.0. Yeah, but kudos to you for somebody <laughs> that didn't like school that yeah. ended up in grad school. Yeah, yeah, Because I stopped sure. after my bachelor's, and yeah. I actually like school. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Again, I was just trying to make sense of it. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, makes sense. I got a lot of student loan debt at that time, right? Mm. So I was like, you know going to grad school was kind of like pushing it, pushing it aside a bit. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, you know, I was trying to find a job, you know, I actually never found a job in my field. A fraternity brother, um, got me this job at department of social services as a caseworker. Okay. Um, and if you know anything about social work, you know, that's, I feel like there's some of the most underpaid, just, just, you know, people in our community, but and they, they're so, it's they're so, so stressful. helpful. Like, yeah, extremely. Yeah. Right. Like I literally would watch coworkers like getting attacked by people when they didn't get their like benefits on time. Yeah. Seen yeah. it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you were in New were you back in New York? At this was time? in Baltimore. Okay, okay, gotcha. So even more Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very urban. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was a nice way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> so but the funny thing is at first when I got that job, it was actually a breath of fresh air because <laughs> even though I was making twenty eight thousand dollars a year, it was like I needed a job because mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm out of school. Student loans start kicking in. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to feel I want to feel like <laughs> like I'm on the right path. I got this degree. Yeah. I got nothing to show for it. So getting that job was kind of exciting at first. But it was like after a couple of years, reality really sat in. I'm like, wait, I went through all these years of school mm. just to make twenty eight thousand mm. dollars a year. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And and you start to realize I'm broke. Right. Yeah. Like it was twenty eight thousand dollars. Sounded real good at first. It sounded right. like you were balling, and then right. you're like, "No, I'm really broke, struggling." Yes. Right. <laughs> and, I, and I just remember, like, okay, if I go to go to college and do all this school, like, I'm gonna be able to have this dream job mm -hmm. and like dream family and like, you know, you just kind of see these things when Absolutely. you're when you're when you're young, um, and it was nothing like that. And I just got more and more frustrated. I had a roommate at that time. He had quit his job to start a business and he was making about fifty thousand dollars. And now to me, I was like, bro, you were making fifty thousand dollars? Yeah. And you quit your job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that inspired me because he he made a decision to go out there and build something. Mm -hmm. And then he would suggest me to read these different personal development books. And like I started reading these books. And I was like, man, I can actually become an entrepreneur. You know? Mm -hmm. And I made the decision to, to actually go out here and, and build something. But it was like, as I was reading these books, it taught me about, you know, going to seminars and conferences and finding coaches and being intentional about your goals. And, and again, you can design your life. Wow. And I knew I wanted to travel the world and, 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 and create wealth, but I didn't know if it was possible, mm -hmm. but 
it was like going to these events and reading these books, it showed me that I could. Mm. But I had to make a decision and I had to be extremely intentional. And I had to believe it. I had to believe it. You know, and, and so many people, they want a certain life, but they don't necessarily believe that they can have it. Mm. You know? What was it for you that you went from this space that you didn't know if it could happen? Was it just the constant messaging, the consistency of the message that took you from disbelief to belief? So it, I was so like dissatisfied and so frustrated, but I knew that I was smart and I knew that I was mm -hmm. ambitious mm -hmm. and I knew that I had a lot of just talents, but I just, I just knew that I wasn't in the right environment. I just knew like I was lacking something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I also knew deep down inside, if I just found the right things, the right information, the right people, the right situation, like I knew I was going to like do something. Right. I just needed it. Right. You know? So, so you, you finally have made up your mind. Look, I'm looking at my roommate. Yeah. My, my roommate is making uh, much more money than I yeah. am. Now I know that I can build my own. Yeah. I can go build the life that I want. Right. Yeah. What was the first thing you tried to do? <laughs> so I had this bright idea to start a mastermind group. Okay. And pretty much what a mastermind is, is when you pretty much, you know, you, you round up like-minded people mm -hmm. and you guys meet up, you know, could be on a weekly basis, bi-weekly, bi mm -hmm. and we would share different ideas. And I mm -hmm. made sure I picked some friends that would complain about their jobs like I did. Right. And we would meet up on a weekly basis and we talked about different business ideas. Um, one of my friends, we talked about hookah, sorry, hookah shop. We talked about lounges. We talked about all types of crazy stuff. That's where we always go to. It's right. like the bars, the clubs. I, I don't know why hookah shop, but it yeah. sounded real good at the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's fire. A hookah shop. Everybody will come, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's lit. This I will quit. Oh um, yeah. So, but then one of my friends, they were talking about, you know, you know, you can do wholesaling, right? Wholesaling real estate. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, you don't have to have any money. And I was like, for real? And I didn't have any money. Yeah. So I was like, let me look into this. I remember, I literally remember after that mastermind, I went home and I like, it was like I researched the internet top to bottom about wholesale and real estate. Yeah. Like I was looking for every resource, like everything. Yeah. And I would literally stay up until like, it was time to go to work. Like just reading and just engulfing all this information in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming back to the next meeting. I said, guys, we're going to start a wholesale real estate business, right? Yeah. Like all of us. Yeah. And I had like went out there and got the LLC and I was like creating all this strategy and like marketing plans and all that. And they were all on board too. And, but the thing is, I feel like I was like the most adamant, mm -hmm. right? So like we were just kind of figuring it out, but I had this bright idea a few weeks after starting it. Mind you, I didn't make any money yet that I was going to quit my job. And... I want to say like by June, I had put uh, a quit notice to my manager for August mm. that I was going to quit. So you gave him a two month notice instead of two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't You know what it was? It was because I was reading, I was reading books and I was reading this book called Success Principles by Jack Canfield. And he was just about like writing all your goals down and putting dates right. and just being very intentional. So right. like I was being very coachable. Right. So I was like, all right. If I'm going to go all in, like, let me not give myself any excuse. Sure. And I always recommend people before anybody gets ideas, right? Like, don't quit prematurely like I did. Mm. Like, you, I trusted my gut, right? But I always tell people, like, don't just go off of what you hear. Like, trust your gut. But a lot more safer route would really be to, like, actually build something, have that business be sustainable, producing, you know, consistent income, and you have, you know, good savings, that's a lot more stress-free. So you're recommending don't always take the leap. I'm not saying that a leap isn't good. So are you saying maybe while you're working your nine mm -hmm. to five, start to build this thing yeah. on the side? So, okay. So yeah, I, okay. I would recommend that. It's, I learned from Jim Rohn work, you know, nine to five on your job and then five to nine on your fortune. Mm. Right. And it's easier that way. Because don't just do it because you hear it like on a podcast or because you hear somebody else do it. Yeah. Now, if deep down inside in your gut, you know, you feel and, and you're hearing something, you're hearing a higher voice yeah. and it's saying, hey, listen, you should do X, Y, Z. Yeah. 
that's something that's, you know you should do. But we got uh, let's stop right there. We yeah. got to make sure it's the higher voice. We got to make sure it's yes. God because sometimes it's our emotions because we're that's frustrated, we're tired, we're fact. exhausted, we don't like our boss, all of these other things, that's and we're fact. saying, oh, this got to be God, right? You and better. and it, I don't want y'all to say, well, Kamoy quit, so I'm gonna quit, <laughs> and, y'all, and then y'all get tight at me because because guess what? It's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be easy. Um, you're gonna go through ups and downs, and you have to be really wholeheartedly okay with that decision in the event anything were to happen. Okay. That you know that's that's right. the thing for sure. So for me, like I was willing to take ownership of that decision. I own that. I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow or next mm-hmm. week, mm-hmm. but I did own that I was gonna do whatever it took. Okay. Not everybody has that mindset. No, you're absolutely right. You know? So you start, did you actually start doing the, the assignments or the wholesale right, so, real estate? So I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like constantly studying and researching and marketing. I'm like sending out, like putting up banded signs. I'm like sending out direct letters, like any, like all these different things. I'm like, I'm going to networking events, real, you know, REI, real estate investor associate meetings. I'm going to all these different things. I'm in the hunt. Yeah. Um, and, and you're broke, obviously. And I'm broke. Okay. And I'm broke. Yeah. And as I'm doing this. <laughs> As I'm doing, well, I, you know, interestingly enough, I had about twelve thousand dollars in my bank account, so I wasn't rich, but I had a little bit of money saved up. And that's coming from that West Indian household, because you, you know, know they crazy? teach you to sh- save all. <laughs> but I wasn't the best saver. Here's what really? I was doing: I okay. was like, I was flipping Insanity P90X and Rosetta Stones. Wait, wait, was- wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 it's a crazy situation, right? Like, so you you were working. Yeah. By this time, have you quit? No. Okay, so you were you were working and yeah. your side hustle was what? I was I was I was selling Insanity P90X and Rosetta Stones. But you were bootlegging them. So I, so it's interesting. So I was ordering it. <laughs> I was ordering it from China, right? Okay, so he wasn't bootlegging, <laughs> but he was ordering the bootlegs. Yeah, yeah I was ordering from China. <laughs> I may have um, actually got the Insanity but, from you then because I had that back in the day, but it wasn't the official copy. You know what's crazy? <laughs> I I don't know. I, at that time, I really didn't know that it was bootleg. No, I, nobody did back in yeah. the day. No, no. I just sure. <laughs> I just thought I found like a wholesale real like source. Yeah. And I saw the margin in terms of how much I got it for and what people were actually buying it for. Yeah. And I was like, this is awesome. But do you know it was selling like crazy? Oh, yeah. And the, and the Rosetta Stones, too. No, listen. <laughs> it, honestly, it was like drugs. I could I could not believe how much it was. I was selling it on Craigslist. People wow. were meeting me. People were even buying from me, like allowing me to ship it online. Wow. And I even had like... I had like friends and like I had like a friend in um it was my frat brother he lived in Richmond Virginia so I'd give him some so if I had people in Richmond that wanted some moving them right like <laughs> Move, I had moving people, that weight it was crazy <laughs> I couldn't believe how much money like money was just coming in and yeah. I, I would literally after work I sometimes jump on the the Mark train from Baltimore to DC to meet people at Union Station in DC. Yeah. I was serious. But come on, here's yeah. the thing. They say God protects fools and babies yeah. because looking back, you don't realize that you, you, it was probably super illegal what you were doing. Look what happened. Yeah. <laughs> so it, the money was coming in so much and I was like, yo, this is amazing. I remember <laughs> I remember, I remember Googling this, right? I remember yeah. Googling like, you know, Insanity Rosie. So I don't know why I Googled it, but all I, all I remember is there was like this guy in Miami that got caught with all this stuff, and Sandy P ninety X's, and he was making all this money, and he ended up getting like <laughs> arrested. <Big time. laughs> and I, yeah, I, I promise you, my heart <laughs> fell in my foot. I was like, "What?" I said, "All right, cease and desist. This is done." Like, I, I, like, but it was tough because I had this all this inventory in the crib. Oh my god! Um, but I was like, I gotta stop. Yeah, I wasn't aware. Yeah, yeah. I literally looked just because the money was coming in. I was yeah. like, why isn't everybody doing this? This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> why uh, is everybody yeah. doing this? Um, oh, that's great. Okay, so then so, you, you yeah. said saved up a little money yeah. with the side. With the, <laughs> didn't know le- illegal side hustle at the time. Right. You didn't know you were really pushing weight. <laughs> right, literally. <laughs> okay. Um. So, yeah, so, like, I had that, you know, money. But it, funny, I was blowing that money because yeah. I really had made, like, $25,000 in, like, three months just doing that on the side. Wow. Right? Just moving. That's crazy. <laughs> and at that time, that was a lot. That's right? a lot. Yeah. This is like twenty, like twelve, twenty thirteen. Okay. Um. So yeah, right. So I'm figuring out this wholesale thing, but by the time August came, I still didn't do a deal, and like half the group had like quit, quit on me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and but it was time to you know quit this job. I'm packing up my box. People are telling me, "Yo, congratulations! What are you gonna do?" And I'm just like, you know, I got got a business, a little business. And people are like, okay, All right? But this one lady comes up to me and she's like, you know, Mr. Martin, I'm so proud of you because I, I planned on leaving this place like 10 years ago, but I got stuck. Say that again. 
The she, woman comes up mm-hmm. to you and says, she's so proud of me. And she was like, I planned on leaving here like 10 years ago, but I got stuck. And I got to tell you, I was very nervous. I was uncomfortable because I was going to get rid of this guaranteed job. It was, it wasn't a lot of money, but it was still a guaranteed job. Um, but mm. it was her telling me that that gave me confirmation that even though I don't know what's about to happen, I knew that I was at least stepping out on faith and going after my dreams and like, you know, taking ownership of my destiny. Sometimes so, you got to be more afraid of being stuck facts. than you are of what is on the other side 100%, of fear. 100%. Wow. 100%. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, you take the leap. You're so, out here now. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're wholesaling. Uh, it's not quite working out. It's not, like it's not working, but it doesn't feel like it. I'm, it that's the thing. Even though I wasn't getting results, it didn't feel like it wasn't working. That's it just good. felt like I was in I was in the journey. I was in the process. You that's know, good. that's that's that was my perspective. Do you think it was because you were learning and you were challenging yourself? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And in, in my mind, I just understand beginnings. I understand process. Tell me, what do you understand about beginnings and process? Well, I understand. I don't necessarily look for instant gratification, right? I understand that if I put my mind body and soul to anything, I can, I can learn it and I can get good at it. And I understand that just because I don't see results in the beginning, that it's not, it's, it's not that it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. I'm just figuring it out. Right. Like that's, that's just my belief. So what was your first big break that you knew? Like, okay, this entrepreneur thing yeah. is definitely for me. So boom, September comes mid September. Finally got a good, finally got a deal, right? Got a deal, got a house under contract. And, um, I want to say it was like for like $50,000. It was in, you know, Baltimore County. And I had like learned all these different ways to like, you know, find buyers and stuff. So I found this cash buyer and he was willing to pay me like fifty five hundred dollars more, you know, over what the contract was. So pretty much I was gonna make fifty five hundred dollars on the deal. Okay. And that wasn't like me being rich, but it was the fact that, wow, I just found this buyer. I I created an opportunity to make fifty five hundred dollars. The deal closed in like a couple weeks, and I made fifty five hundred dollars, and that gave me so much confidence. Mm-hmm. That little fifty five hundred dollars. So I was like, damn, I did it. Mm-hmm. And by that time, everybody had stopped. Mm-hmm. It was just me left. Yeah, all your friends are gone now. They've probably gone back to work. They're- yeah. Okay. Oh, hold yeah. on. This is so good. Or they didn't all necessarily go back to work. I had like. Or they were doing their own thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, w- I want to talk about that for most a second. Most back to work though. Because don't we often think that most people are going to go with us on the journey? Yeah. Yeah. And you look back, and you're the only one now pursuing this thing that you were super yeah. excited about. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what? Well, you're just a. Never mind. I'm, I'm gonna let you keep going. Okay. Yeah. Th- yeah. Th- that's just so good to think about that tidbit when you look around you and because sometimes the journey to success is lonely. Yeah. Cause you do want that friend to say, Hey, what do you think about this? Hey, yeah. what do you, and it was just you. Yeah. I mean, honestly, entrepreneurship is, is, is kind of lonely, you know, because just because you made a decision doesn't mean that everybody else did, mm. you know? Um, and it's just real. It's not that ain't, they're bad or like whatever it's just, but it, but it, it is a decision because mm-hmm. it's not going to be easy. Mm-hmm. You're going to, there's going to be times where you're going to like second guess your sanity. Right. Um, so yeah, that boom, that first deal. So that kind of inspired me to put more money into marketing. And that's what I did. I put more money into marketing. I was more, more, even more intentional because again, I seen proof. Mm-hmm. So I just started ramping up, started doing more deals, making more money, you know, did a deal for $10,000, did a deal for like $18,000. And it was just like, it was getting more consistent. And it's like, wow, I'm making money, like good money. Yeah. And I'm doing it on my own efforts, not from a job. Mm. Right. Um, and I started, you know, a little different other businesses, businesses, and things of that nature. And then in 2017, um, I heard about this whole Airbnb thing. Okay. And I had a friend that actually exposed me to it because she was like renting out a, an apartment, right? Furnishing it. And she was like, yeah, I'm going to put this on Airbnb. And I was like, so you don't have to buy property mm. to do Airbnb. Yeah. And just a disclaimer. You don't want to just rent out apartments or rent out places for Airbnb, right? Because what I will say is when I started this business, I started it the wrong way. Okay. And when I say the wrong way, 
is without getting permission from landlords and property managers. You were not just letting people come in and rent from you without letting the landlord know. Yes. <laughs> Here yes. you go again, bootlegging CDs. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I didn't really know better. Yeah. I didn't really know better. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why. Because my friend was doing that. that but I saw my <laughs> friend do that. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh, okay. So I'm you're like do... sneaking people in the back door? It was literally like the Underground Railroad. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> so... So, but I, but I did that for a, a little period of time. I saw the money coming in, so I thought it was cool. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, you know, I, I'd get kicked out of a couple places. Mm -hmm. So from that point, I was like, you know, I really like this Airbnb thing. Obviously, I'm seeing the money coming in, and I see the fact that I can do this without having to buy property. But I was like, you know what? How can I do this the right way? Mm -hmm. And then I pretty much started, you know, f coming up with a message on how to talk to landlords and prop managers and presenting myself in a way where what we do makes sense and how it could be a value. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting permission. And the great thing is when you do that, you start building relationships with these, with these investors, mm -hmm. right? Cause that's what they are. They're investors. They're buying property. Right. Um, but the thing is, let's just say like case in point, I remember when this one landlord allowed me to get one apartment inside of an apartment building mm -hmm. and they saw how great I took care of the property. I was consistent on the rent. You know, I was doing good business and he was like, you know what? When somebody moved out, he had asked me, do you want another one? Wow. And I was like, sure. Right. Yeah. And then I was like, when somebody else moved out, do you want another one? Wow. And it's like, that's the power of relationships. And that's the power of getting permission because you have the ability to scale just like that. Oh, wow. You know, that's good. So. You know, after a while, it was just kind of like it became so simple getting properties. I, and, I, and I remember because I think a lot of times and I'm not knocking anybody that doesn't get permission because I'm be honest with you. There's a lot of people that that do do that. They just kind of rent out properties. Right. And unfortunately, there are people out here that that teach it that way. Like, yeah. Oh, you don't have to get permission. Just right. Um, but I can never teach it that way because I know how it feels to get kicked out of a place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and then you've seen the benefits of doing it the other way. Yes. Right. Sure. Yes. It's a real business at that point. Yeah. Because before it's like, you're just hoping you don't get caught. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, I don't want to run my business on hope. Yeah. Mm, that's good. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. hope business. Um, so it was just like, it, it became so simple to get properties and it was just like getting more and more and more. And it's like, and then what really shifted it was I understood that I didn't have to do everything myself because I, I don't know why, but I used to clean my own properties. Right, I would have thought to do the same thing to save that money. Save that money, yeah. right? Um, but here's what people have to understand, right? And this is what I had to understand. True business owners, they work on their business, not in their business. Oh, my you know? God. Say that again. They work on their business, not in their business. True business owners. You know, a lot of people, they think they have a business, but they really own a job. They're doing everything, right? And I had to learn that because, you know, Jamaicans <laughs> will work one job. Two job, three jobs. You know, like <laughs> yes. we pride ourselves on hustle and work. Yes. And and even for business owners, sometimes we feel like, you know, we don't think someone else is gonna, you know, care about putting in the work or care about the business as much as we will. And they won't. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to. Yeah. But either way, if you wanna really grow and actually create like freedom you're going to have to delegate. You're going to have to hire and you're going to have to trust that they're going to do what it takes. You, you, like you just have to, that's leadership. That's good. Come away. Or you, you're going to be, you know, working time. Broke. Like you said, just you bought another job. Yeah. How do you, how do you build a good team? Yeah. So, you know, with, when it comes to the Airbnb business, right? Like that's the cool thing. You don't necessarily have to have a huge organization, right? I mean, a cleaner, uh, a handyman, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it, even if you want, you can have like a virtual assistant or a virtual prop manager team, right? To talk to your guests. Mm -hmm. like, so I literally have people that talk to guests for me 24-7, 365. So I don't have to answer any questions, right? And it's p completely passive. This is like mailbox money. Yeah. So this is why you're able to travel. You have been to 49 yes. countries. yes. Because you don't have to necessarily manage these properties Absolutely. anymore. Yeah. So you are making money while you sleep. Yeah. Through Look, the Airbnb business. My mentor told me, he said, come on, if you don't find a way to make money in your sleep, you're going to work until you die. Mm. 
I, I, I just never thought that it would be possible to scale an Airbnb business to the point of passive income. Yeah. I thought that there was some sort of, obviously every now and again, but I thought that it was a very hands on. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. Like that, the fact that you figured out that formula and you teach that formula. Absolutely. Too. Okay. Uh, oh my God. I have so many. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Cause I know we're going to run out of time, but yeah. so at one time, what was the most amount of Airbnb properties you had at one time? 15, 15 at mm -hmm. one time. Um, what was the, now I'm about to get in your bank account. Okay. See, sorry. I, I make people, <laughs> I make people do this. If somebody is interested in the Airbnb business, obviously this is not a guaranteed number. Nobody can mm -hmm. guarantee a number. It depends mm -hmm. on how much you want to work it, how much you want to scale yep. it. Um, in passive income, what would you say on average you have made in passive income like monthly? Is yeah. it five figures, six figures? Yeah. So when it comes to the Airbnb business, like definitely five figures, like, you know, monthly. What I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Um, and here's what I'll tell you, like being very conservatively, um, on average for like, say an apartment, I would say the profit is about $1,500 being very conservative. There's ways to make it more like you can make it a themed, you can make it very unique and attractive and you can make 3000, 4000, 5000, or it could be a house, right? And you can make again, 5000, 6000, you know what I'm saying? Like, but just being very conservative for like a regular one bedroom studio, you could profit about $1,500. You know? On one. Yeah. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> I need some Airbnb. Yeah. I have actually taken Kamoy's uh, course before. And like, it was mind blowing, kind of like this conversation we're having right yeah. now. It's super mind blowing, like, oh my gosh. And again, I love your Instagram page because yeah. you enjoy life. Yeah. And there was a word you mentioned earlier, you mentioned freedom. Yeah. And that's what you're teaching people to get freedom yeah. through entrepreneurship. Yep. Is Airbnb still a thing? Because a lot of people believe the myth that yeah. it's not because COVID is no longer, yeah. you know, and so now people are not renting them anymore. Is yeah. that true? Is it not? So, so here's what people have to understand. The short-term rental industry has been around even before any of us been on the planet, mm. you know, hence why there are hotels, right? Like people need place to stay short-term. Yeah. And Airbnb just so happens to be a popular, a popular, you know, company, right? The short-term rental industry is almost like the NBA Airbnb is just like the, the warriors, mm, you yeah. know, um, but the industry is not going anywhere, right? Like whether people want to travel for leisure and let's just say something happens like a COVID or a pandemic and people aren't traveling. Well, guess what? There are health professionals that still need short term rentals. There's travel nurses, there's construction workers, there's other medical professionals that need a place to stay for a short period of time, whether maybe someone has a loved one in a hospital. I get a lot of guests like that, unfortunately, because I got places near hospitals and they have a loved one that's, you know, sick and they need to stay someplace close to the hospital. There's going to always be a need for short term rental stays. Yeah. You know, that's good. You, you mentioned earlier marketing too. how important is marketing to any entrepreneurial type business? Yeah. How, I mean, mm. cause here's the thing. That's the part nobody mentions. Yeah. Everybody thinks as long as I have a great product, yeah. it will sell. Listen. You said you invested money. You took certain money and invested it into more marketing. Yeah. How important is that? Listen, marketing is everything. If they don't know you, they can't flow you. Mm. Like, like McDonald's does not make the best burger. Like, do you think you can make a better burger than McDonald's? Uh, honestly, yes. I know you, that I you know, do. Yeah. A lot. Most people can. Yeah. But why is it that they sell more burgers than anybody? Because mm. of marketing. That's like, good. when you see that, that, that yellow arch, like, that's everywhere. Yeah. It's marketing. You have to mark, you have to invest into marketing if you want to build a business. Okay. So we're, we're on the dash, right? Yeah. Um, when I also think about the dash besides, you know, your story, I think about ingredients, you know, your mama was in there cooking. It's just something about your mama's, you know, when she cooked, she just knew how to put a little extra sprinkle in yeah, something, yeah, yeah. right? There are people out there that have already started on their business or they have an idea. Yeah. Right. And they just need that little extra sauce. They need that little extra dash, that little extra sprinkle. Yeah. What is something that you can tell them, you know, to lead them into success, to encourage them, to keep them from quitting? What yeah. is that? You know, give, give us a secret sauce, man. Um, 
there is no secret sauce, right? Mm, <laughs> that's true, num- that's true. number one. But but for real, man, like you, you have to go all in, right? Like you got to stop toe dipping. You you got to make you got to truly make a decision. If you look at the word decide, right? The end of the word decide is I, just like pesticide, genocide, right? It means to kill off. When you decide that you're going to do something, you kill off any excuses, excuses or options not to achieve that very thing. You know, you have to invest in yourself. Like for me, I've spent I've spent hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars investing into coaching, mentorship, seminars, conferences. I invest into marketing. I'm all in. A lot of people, they they just they 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 put one foot out there and they're like, well, I'm gonna try. And I'm not gonna go too far in because in the event it doesn't work out, I won't look that bad. Mm. And that's what's really killing a lot of people's business. They have to go all in. And you got to constantly be a student, right? I never feel like I made it. Like I made it. Mm-hmm. I'm always, like, I'm, again, I'm always in events because I need to always learn. I need to, the times are always changing. Yeah. So I need, again, if you, it's, change is the only thing that remains the same. Those who adapt persevere. Those who do not merely fade away. So I constantly need to learn new information so I can adapt to change, you know? So you need to write a book, Kamoy. I mean, you got <laughs> bars all day long. Okay, last question. Okay. When you think about the dash two, you think about a dashboard. You have the speedometer, you have the check engine light, you have the gas gauge, you got all this stuff that you're checking out all at once, right? Yeah. So let's talk about what were some of the telltale signs that maybe you needed to either speed up, slow down, or that you were running on empty? Because as successful as you are, there are certain things that you have to look at. You got to pay attention to yourself. You got to pay attention to your mind, your body. Right. What are some of those things or what is one thing that, you knew that, okay, something's not checking out right for me right now and I may need to take a step back or it's time for me to go full throttle. So a few years ago, um, I felt like I had reached a ceiling, Hmm. right? And and it wasn't because I wasn't working hard. I was probably working harder than I've ever worked before, but I had still reached a ceiling. I was still capped out. And I feel like what happened was I was, I continuously was doing the same things I was doing. Like I was going to the same type of events or I was learning the same type of information. Mm. I was tapped into the same type of people. Mm. And what I needed to do was I needed to tap into a higher level, a higher level above that ceiling so I can have a breakthrough. And (laughs) so what I did was I, I truly found a coach, right? And when I found that coach, you know, they're pretty much telling me what I need to do in order to have him coach me. And he said, well, it's going to cost you about $30,000 and I'm going to coach you for a year. Mm. And I got to tell you something. When he said $30,000, I was like. You saw my face. I was like. uh." I I, I was like, that was how much I made in my last job. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Right. And, and I was making a decent amount of money, but I had never spent that much money on personal development, any of that. Um, so, but I understood the individual, I understood the value that they brought and I understood where they could potentially take me. So I want to say I had evaluated for like 24 hours and it was like very uncomfortable, but I just had this really like, just this, this, com- this real conversation with myself. And I was like, well, if you don't do anything different, you're not going to get anything different. And I was like, and I, and I, and I did this thing where I like broke down 30 K divided by 12 months. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't so bad yeah. when, when I did it that way. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. And, um, I locked in with that coach and it's crazy. The next very next day, um, I was on a private jet with him. First time that I, that I've ever been on a private jet. He brought wow. me on a private jet. Wow. And, you know, we, we were on the way to a mastermind and that, 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 you know, those series of events, that's what took me to another level. And that's what pushed me through that breakthrough. Mm-hmm. Um, cause there's a the saying, man, if you don't pay, you don't pay attention. And it was because I paid that money and it was because of the information I was operating in a way that I've never operated before. I was learning things that I've never learned before. And guess what? I was getting around other people that were paying that type of money. So people that pay that type of money on their, on their mind, they're a different type of people. These people don't play around. No one pays $30,000 and just like chill. They're, they're, they're moving on high cylinders. So I was getting around those type of people. 
And because of that, I was getting different results, mm. higher results. And now I understand whenever I hit a ceiling, I need to do things I've never done before and I need to go to that next level. Oh, come on. That is so good. You have dropped so many gems today. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, he mentioned finding a coach and I believe in mentorship. Yeah. Um, there was a point in my life where I'm like you. I'm like, I'm not fixing to pay such and such amount yeah. of money to take a class and to do this and to do that. And then I'm like, but I'm going nowhere. I'm still staying right here. Yeah. I've, I've leveled out. Um, and so it is important that we change our mentality and invest in ourselves. Yeah. You do an Airbnb class, which I think is such a simple course. And when mm -hmm. I say simple, powerful the information is amazing, but you don't make it complicated. Ah. You don't make it a riddle. Right. Um, tell everybody how they can follow you, um, get more information yeah. about your course, and then we'll pull up a put up put up a link at yeah. the end of this episode so that people can click on it, get your course, and learn how to do what you do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So let For everybody sure. know how to follow you. Yeah, so you could tap with me on Instagram, right? Kamoy K E M O Y underscore martin m-a-r-t-i-n um also you know tiktok i think it's the kamoy martin you can tap me there on twitter kamoy underscore martin and also too i'm on youtube right i'm just starting a youtube channel yeah and, um, i, I want to grow that sucker so follow me there right? <laughs> kamoy martin right now i'm dropping a lot of content a lot of value a lot of just cool stuff um but either way too like you tap with me and i'm sharing a lot of gems a lot of adventures and if you are serious if you're serious yeah. not just curious right we're gonna drop that link down below so that we can pretty much get that program right and i teach you step by step how to build a six figure plus airbnb business without having to own property so you'll understand you know you there's a script right so you'll know what to say to landlords and prop managers um we were to find those cleaners mm -hmm. Where to find a handyman, where mm -hmm. to find, you know, how can you have a virtual assistant talk to your guests 24 seven, all these, all these things that you need, it's, it's there for you. So that way you don't have to overthink it. Right. You don't have to make the mistakes that I made. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can literally get right to it. Like I've literally had students get their first property in less than a week. Wow. You know, just from executing on the information right we don't have to do it alone anymore we got to stop man we yeah. got to start beating our head on the wall and yeah. trying to do it so independently yeah take it from somebody that's already learned the business messed up on the business 100%. done it the bootleg way <laughs> yeah. and now he does it the right way and also <laughs> I, make sure you follow him too because if you lack inspiration this man's page will inspire you i appreciate that you live a life of freedom yeah i'm gonna tell y'all how free he is all i gotta tell people so he pulls up to the interview right because you know Kamoy actually flew in town and i'm like hey what time what is, is your flight so i can get you out of here and he was like oh i haven't booked it yet i said hold on what and he's like I don't know where I'm going to go next. I may go to the game. I may, you know, and I'm just like, that is goals. This is the life we want to live. So it's not a stunt. It's not a front. Like I witnessed it for myself. I was like, okay, pull up there with just your suitcase and just live your best life. So come on. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for Absolutely. dropping these gems and inspiring. Thank you for sharing your story. This is what the dash is about. Yeah. Cause your dash it. is going to help create and change somebody else's dash so mm. i appreciate that that's powerful I, I never i never thought about it like that yeah. right that's yeah. that's, a, that's a that's a responsibility it is and, yeah. and and you're fulfilling it you're doing you're walking in purpose you said mm. something earlier you said your story your glory what was the little saying you said oh they they see your glory but they don't see your story and so you see his glory but now you know his story yep. boom Yep, the dash, yep, baby. Yep, yep, yep. Thanks for the support. Make sure you subscribe to the Dash Podcast YouTube channel. Also, we're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. And feel free to share with some family and friends. Thanks, guys.